This is not a test Don't expect to be impressed Put on your life vest Sit down your armrest It's time to stray from the grind Don't take my hand cause you'll find No peace of mind Hi there, welcome to Side Quest, the exciting in-between episodes we do between the adventures. You're dying to find out what's happening next in the adventures. Well, fuck you, it's a side quest. That's how it works. Uh, what do we do on Side Quest? Well, we, we might get an exciting guest. We might play a different game. We might just gripe about bullshit because we're old men and we're tired of stuff. Who do we have? Who are the old men we have with us today? Got myself, Steve Weverell. We've got Rick Walteri. We've got MK Gibson Gibby. Hello. I have a hey. mouthful of food. There we go. Really just really just stressing that boomer vibe. Well 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 you well you chew and swallow and try not to choke. Um I'll remind people because I just got a text message from T Public telling me, hey, there's a thirty five percent sale off sale going on. Uh, which is a good reminder that if you love the A and E podcast, if you want to like you know help support us, well there's definitely our Patreon. But if you want to look like us, and why wouldn't you? <laughs> you should hey go to our Tee Public shop and buy some uh, and buy some merch. Have and you been a, itching to acquire this vibe? I know you have. So start shaving your heads, <laughs> uh, getting hats and glasses. Um, Drink uh, like, let's, four let's beers. Face, capturing one of us, skinning us alive, and wearing us as a meat suit is technically illegal. So yeah. why not just grab a T-shirt instead? It's easier to let yourself go a little bit. Uh, shave your head. You know what? I'm tired. If anybody wants to take my skin and be me, uh, that's fine. Right. <laughs> you do that, bro. Uh, yeah, so today's topic, somewhat ironically, speaking in England, those watching on YouTube can say it's quite grey here, despite being in July. Summertime, baby. It's summertime. Normally we summertime. do it like, hooray. I hate this fucking season. <laughs> Not the greatest season for Ginger's Gibby. That's, that's it is. Hard. It is. It, it. I feel like every vampiric. Every time that sun rolls up over, like when that big blonde bitch comes over the mountainside, like, and you know, just like I, I feel things crackle that aren't meant to crackle and burn. So you and I are on the wrong continents, mate. We both evolved from the same place, but I think I've got some frustrated Mediterranean in my ancestry because I fucking hate it when I don't get a decent summer. Dude, dude, I, I, oh I am. I am like more than half. Italian. I mean, you know, like, like you know, my 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 people evolved to like walk in the sun wearing like gold chains and like you know <laughs> and uh, masses and, and, of like, chest hair. chests and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I still hate summer, so I must have yeah. I must have gotten some the recessive part of those genes. <laughs> You're like, are you like a northern Italian where they're all blonde and like kind of pale and like like the albino versions? Oh, or like, the proper one. You, the you, proper know, you, know, one. you know something? I have no idea because I've never done one of those twenty three and Me things because one. I don't want to be connected to, to relatives coming out of the woodwork that I right. don't want to be connected to. Yeah, and yeah. two, I don't want to like, you know, go like, I don't want to know the inevitable, which is like, Oh, the Gualtieri the family are, are descended from like village idiots from the, you know, my one, my one friend, I'm not going to name his name. I don't know if he listens to the podcast or not, but was very proud for a very long time of his Italian heritage, only to find out, oh, no, someone was adopted. That was a lie. Your last name is a bullshit, and you are as Irish as the day is long. He's actually more <laughs> Irish than I am. It's like I'm almost, I'm almost got Irish. But that 23, I'm around, I'm around like 92%. The, 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 the UK glows on that map, but for I, him, I, I it's just, like 97%. It's like he can't get I would just walk more. up and be like, give me that fucking plate of spaghetti. And here, eat some boiled cabbage and shut up. <laughs> Ironically I enough, I have like a 0.3% Sri Lankan. I don't know why. I don't know which one of like like Angus O'Malley decided to like he's gonna go like uh, sail east for some like sh- some sort of Shanghai surprise. So yeah, I love it when uh, Irish Americans do a 23 and Me, and it turns out they're English. I'm like, sorry, kid. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> See, part of me like yearns for for the, the for the uh, the hills of of your of your floating uh, landmass there because it's like, hey, sun doesn't really set here, or it doesn't really like come through. It's like it's very depressing and, and cloud cover. My goal is to find a land of perpetual fall, like 
like between oh, 52 at night and no higher than 67 in the in the during the day. That's my that's my bailiwick. That's where I, I reign supreme. Can I, I wear shorts but a fleece? I can't remember what the level is called on Warcraft, but it's the one with all the undead. <laughs> that's pretty much England for most of the year. Right. <laughs> I fucking love it when the sun comes out. I can see better. Everything feels better. Everyone in this country becomes about. 20% more likable when the sun's out. It only happens for like six days. And it's back right, right to the now, we, just, we just entered into the terrible, like the terrible month of living in New Jersey. And in truth, all months are terrible living in New Jersey, but this is an extra terrible <laughs> month because the temperature is not as high as some, as some areas of the U S we're like, we're in the nineties, which is not fun. Same. We're, we're hovering at about 99.99999% humidity. The type where you step outside, your glasses steam up, you know you should have brought a snorkel out to breathe. If right at that moment, if somebody had to, if somebody just had to drive by and filled you full of bullet holes, you'd thank them. <laughs> it's I, I'm with you because down here in Maryland, it's I'm Italian couple, air conditioning. I'm a couple states <laughs> south of you, but Maryland is a very green, especially where I live, is a very green, like a lot of rolling hills, a lot of uh, trees, but all these trees are very moist and a lot of nature. And it's constantly giving up moisture. So, moist. Moist. yeah, but okay, I want you. For those who don't understand the humidity aspect, like imagine a very large, unattractive man uh, breathing hot, just going (sighs) on your taint as soon as you walk outside all over your body. It is like the moisture is just breathing on you. Nobody wanted to imagine that. I know, but People I had to come now, here for a bit. And now you do too. Like now, imagine like him and his forty-nine siblings all over your body. <sighs> all on you at once it is hot it is moist <laughs> who is uh, this man one of 50 brothers <laughs> well one don't don't shame this man he comes from a very long line of like he's like he you know he's they're stocky fellows give me as a storyteller you now rope yourself into creating a, a brand new fucking legacy <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah that's what it feels like it feels like being breathed on by like large 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 humans who like it's just it's hot it's moist and it's pervasive it's every pore every every, everything that's even exposed unexposed you guys go run right back inside or get in your car real fast it's miserable so that i would say in in england they do complain about heat we're not really set up for it it's like we don't have air conditioning because it's fucking not worth the investment uh and it's quite humid it's kind of like a maritime climate most of the time so when it gets hot it's real hot Right, I fucking love it. I'm not yeah. kidding about the frustrated. I must be like somebody in my Italian was just a big fat guy with masses mm. of chest hair, relaxing on a beach, wearing a gold chain, breathing eating, on Gibby's taint, eating yep. a sandwich yep. with yep. pasta in it, <laughs> just <laughs> waiting for my 49 brothers to to ambush an Irishman. I'm glad you you take the trooping room because you have to realize we are all middle three middle-aged men complaining about the weather on a podcast. So I'm trying to breathe a little bit of life into it, a little bit, a little like imagery, right like liven this breathe. shit up. Yeah. Hot, hot breathe, a little breathe. bit of life into hot, this podcast. Moist breathe. Hot. Yeah, exactly. Walking you know, along the moist trees, just looking for a yes. fresh take like, to breathe. When the, when the space between your toes start to sweat, then you know you're uncomfortable. No. You know, uh, so I went over to a friend's house a couple days ago for 4th of July lie you know fuck you england anywho we um we go to their house and like we're hanging out and it's nice like hey the park's about a mile and a half away and they're having a food thing there they got a food trucks and there's a music do you guys want to walk there no i don't (laughs) but my kid wants to go and the wife's like that'd be a good idea so we all decide to walk there it's like a mile and a half maybe two miles tops but by the time you get there, you get that under boobage sweat and the back sweat and the hat and the back, next sweat. And then you're standing in the sun while you're waiting to, for these fucking food trucks. Oh. I have I have the perfect thing to say if you're in a situation like that. Um, you know, done it before myself multiple times. It's like, Dad, I really want to go. No, because I don't love you nearly enough. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to be straight with him. Yeah. No, we went, but like my, my buddy, who's in, he's a, he's a large man. He's like, we got there. He's like, yeah, this was a bad idea. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So we all got our food and went back to their house and sat in the air conditioning and ate it. Like, 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 like people, like, like good people do. You know, like this was miserable. Now I get it. I see people out there, especially like I've seen rip people and large people shirts off enjoying the sun. And they apparently enjoy this feeling oh of freedom. It sounds like an Englishman's heaven. Oh my god! No one's ever invited me to a fucking Fourth of July. I know a load of Americans, uh, but the prejudice apparently still stands. I like standing out in the heat, getting drunk and dripping with burger grease. 
And it was it was great. I mean, there was an effigy there. They had the King George. Like there was, a, he was burning on. There was, it was a noose. Of everything. He's like, been dead a long time, Gibby. Oh, uh, we, we have long memories. I mean, we're <laughs> literally throwing teas in the river that like, goes by the park there just because we could. You know, yeah. my, one of my favorite things about Fourth of July is because uh, you get a Fourth of July and you get all the memes like, Haha, "Take that, King George. We don't have yeah. a monarchy." It's like never again will we be over attacked or oppressed by our government. <laughs> and the next day, I'm just like, uh, "Oh, hey, America, how did it go? Did you, did you have a good time last night?" Yeah, back to reality, bitch. <laughs> exactly. Well, we also have, like certain debates where you're watching, like, "Oh, Lord." <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It's it's fun to have that uh, feel good for the moment, knowing full well that we're just, we're full of shit. You know, you know we, we know we're full of shit. Oh, everybody's got to have an origin story that's fucking full of shit. It's what keeps oh, yeah. it's what, right. it's if you don't have it, you've got fucking yay, yay freedom. Just <laughs> yeah. don't think about it too hard. Don't think yeah. about it. That's what the beer is for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, our 4th of July, we actually had a political event. We um we had a change of government, which should be a really fucking big deal. We had the same government for about 15 years. It's been a shit show. Uh, they're called the Tories. I think most people... Yep. I don't know anybody who wasn't excited to get the Tories out. I think even people who are vote conservatives, like, these guys aren't very good at being conservative. So we got to the other guys in, and now everyone's like, you know the end scene of The Graduate when they're on the bus? And they're like, yeah, we did it. And then they're just like, ah, <laughs> now what? This is awkward. <laughs> That's kind of where we are. It's kind of the same. We're in the Euros right now. Um, big football event. The England team, everybody's just watching going like, do I actually do I like football? I'm starting to think I don't like football. This is yeah, after a while you got to sit back and realize that anybody who probably would make a good leader probably doesn't want to run for office. <laughs> we Why saw in the you? military. Oh, we saw in the military all the time. There were people you, the people that should be leading us, like who should be taking the promotion exams and become higher and higher, opt choose not to because they want to stay in the job and do the job and do it right. But there's a lot of people with the ambition, and that's it. And they do the thing and get promoted and work their way up because they've got drive and ambition, not intelligence, not does not not worth, not not acumen, not intelligence, but they have ambition. And ambitious people don't give a fuck. And ambitious people are the ones that end up sitting in positions of power because people of quality refuse to do it. It happens all the time. It's the confirmation bias that you have a like really smart, really talented people like ah maybe I'm not worth it. Like no, you are. Please Christ, do it. Like do it. And it was it up doing starting a vicious cycle because the stupid people who were in charge, who like you know who they got there by just by being loud with no substance, they're of the mindset that anybody who's loud and has no substance must be smart as as smart as them. So hey, let's promote them. I remember this one company I worked at. There was a, a coworker, and before like you know before the and both the, both directors in charge of my department, they both left at the same time. But they told the person taking over. Do not promote this one person. All they do is blow hot air up your ass. The person who took over. And damn, in that forty-nine brothers, am I right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know where this story is going. Oh but yeah, yeah but- <laughs> you know exactly. You know exa- exactly. It's like you know, on a call, you know, this person just would not shut up. But like you know, it's like yap yap yap. Say nothing other than garbage, easily refutable. And then like, and then they'd give me shit. That, like. I remember one time they were like, well, well, Rick, you didn't say anything on the call. I'm like, yeah, because one, I was listening, and two, I didn't have anything to add to the conversation that would have made it better. You know, much like the person who was talking didn't make it better. Ooh, yeah. nice. Oh, see, that's why you that's why you lose. Like, yeah. that whole thing is like, uh, what was the saying? Better to be thought of a, a fool than open your mouth and remove all doubt. Doesn't work. Doesn't no, work doesn't. at all. <laughs> It's much better to just keep talking. It is. It, well, it's it's also the talk with confidence. And that's mm. it's like the Ikbein Berliner on that whole story. Like, mm. I don't care what you say. Just say like you know what you're talking about and yeah. people will listen, whether it's, it's like, right or not. Or it's like with, from SpongeBob. It's like, you know, you know how people talk louder when they want to sound smarter? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm also in I, I have the unique opportunity to talk about a particular part of the summertime that I also hate. And it's 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 a little niche. So stick with me. Uh, you have friends that go on vacations and then you have to like watch their dog, watch their cat, check their mail, go over to their house and do that thing to help, yeah. help a friend out. I got a good buddy and he's like, you know, he's, he, I don't know if he's going to listen to this podcast. I know he's a great guy, but he's going on a trip. So he's like, hey, man, could you be so kind as to stop in once a day and like check on my cat? You know, not a problem, man. Can do it. But he also lives uh, 50 minutes away. So it's a it's a it's a almost just short of an hour drive to his house. 
it's a 15 minutes inside high cat okay food water poop and leave and it's a 50 minutes back so it's like two hours out of my day for the next like five days is uh, is the is, is the food water poop for the cat or do you show up drink, <laughs> drink his water right in the oh, fridge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> i totally leave took the coke the out of his fridge left an upper decker you know and like just you know <laughs> but yeah it, but it's that summertime thing where you like some people enjoy vacations some people don't some people go some people don't depending on your if you have money if you don't but there's inevitably someone's going to ask you to do those kind of favors which leads into the summertime personal favors do you have any stories about that where you have to like oh god oh, i gotta do yeah. this thing and i don't want uh, to especially because i get older i'm like i hate commitments <laughs> damn it well i'm the um i'm the single one in my family um so when they go on holiday and uh my siblings have done pretty well for themselves so they were like, oh, could you come up and look after her? And they got two really nice cats. They're like Maine Coon cats. Oh, I like Maine Coons. And uh, they live in this lovely village up north. And they're like, could Maine you come? They, they, just- have, they have villages for the Maine Coons? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they live there. But um, <laughs> Holy shit. And you know how people are. We like pets more than people. They probably, Truth. If, we, True. if they wanted to kick someone out of the village, they probably said, should we do the cats fast or that guy <laughs> I don't like? And they'd probably be the guy they don't like. But um yeah, so they were like, uh, do you want to come and look after our cats while we're on holiday? And I was like, yes, I do want to go to your nice, fancy village and uh, sit around in their beer gardens and, and their, their bars and pretend I am one of them. Almost immediately, as soon as I got to their house, one of the cats just goes out the door and that's it. I don't see it for five days. So, oh, shit. I have killed the expensive, fancy cat. And I didn't even try. And this is family member, you said. Not friends, but family? No, this is immediate family, very close. Oh, to that makes it all the worse. Now, are they aware of this yet? <laughs> that, this is, no, it here was first. It okay. was fine. I was panicking for about five days. I was like, I'm le- leaving food outside, leaving the door open at night, just kind of go, oh, this doesn't look good on me. But then, yeah. like, no, like, oh, yeah, he, he does that sometimes. I was like, you motherfucker. <laughs> Ooh, well, you warn a brother first. I mean, Jesus, man. <laughs> the other thing I like to do is uh, my other sister also lives in a very nice little village. Uh, looking after their cats they're like very house cats i don't have to worry about them at all also she has a hot tub so okay there's this is not a fun story it's just like this is probably as close to a vacation i'm getting this year do you I put the cat wait, in the hot tub i gotta <laughs> wait to look after their cats i don't give a shit if i drown a like, cat like a main queue just sitting there chilling with you with a beer like what's up dude like this ain't this their life you know <laughs> the main is like uh where do you come from pauper this is my <laughs> gaff Oh man, that's like when the cat looks down on you, like mm. with your with your like, financial acumen. Like the cat's like, I'm gonna need to see a credit report before you come and sit in my. I, I will shit here outside the litter box and then watch you clean it. <laughs> Everybody in the village was very accepting. The cat, however, was definitely like, you don't belong here. <laughs> oh look, it's it's nice to give the poor people dreams. Let them let them come for a little. Bit. <laughs> Get back to Corby, you industrial hey, scum. Walks up, he gives a sniff. Mm, you smell like squalor. <laughs> I, you smell like a chimney sweep. Look at you. You're like a Dickens novel, aren't you? <laughs> well, I was wearing a raggedy top hat specifically for that. <laughs> is it like the like the like the the poor cat like the top is ripped off and it kind of flipped yeah, open? Yeah. So it's like yeah, okay. I like to be class conscious, Gibby. <laughs> well, it's good to know. It's good. It's good that your country accepts that. I mean, like when you said the Tories earlier, like I went back to my high school, like so, my high school history, like Whigs and Tories. That's as far as I know about the culture. That is that is the <laughs> that is it. I know the names Whigs and Tories. So like, yep, I totally know what you're talking about. Ah, yep, I am. Uh, and, you know, I'll just assume if you have a two party system, then it's like you know, then it's terrible assholes and slightly less worse assholes. <laughs> oh, a thousand percent. Yeah, pretty much. But they both somehow wind up making the same decisions. Well, yeah. you, everything, every system needs a minimum four. Minimum four, because if you got two, yeah, it's like one, Coke or Pepsi. If you get three, one of them's too close to the other ones and pulls votes. You need at least four parties. Mm. We kind of got that. We've got, uh, we've got a system here. It's mm. first past the post. So it doesn't matter how many people vote for someone. They vote in a certain area. They get a seat. Mm-hmm. Had it been first past the post, the kind of residual parties would have been had a lot more presence in parliament, which in this case would have been quite disruptive. Normally I'd say that is a bad thing. It's not working out well for Europe, but um, I don't know. People want change, man. And luckily we have a system in England which ensures that nothing changes ever. Now, at least every 7,500 years, I'm a big fan that like, you know, 
the, uh, you have a revolution, you pull the people from power, you bring out the guillotines, and say, okay, let's re- let, let's restart and hope it's better. Let's this restart time. the clock. Yeah, even though no one, it won't. Now, did you say another, another, century, another, century, another century? You'll be sharpening the guillotines again. But, you just, you've got to keep now, people involved you, in the process. Did you say process. seventy-five or seventy-five hundred years? Because I thought I heard no, like no. every, every seven thousand years we need to shake this. Seventy-five to one hundred. Every seven years, <laughs> the violent revolution. Right. So everybody knows what's it about, you know. Yeah. Well, you don't want any generation to miss it, you know, because that sucks. You know, you really yeah. got to get around. And, and you want it to happen, like, you know, soon enough that even like, you know, even the, the those who were like, who were babies at the time, it's still in their memory of like, oh, yeah, this could happen. It's like, <laughs> yeah, just like, you're in power now, but uh, yeah. <laughs> remember how that can go. Yeah, like, I, like, well, like it seems to be, a, it takes about roughly just under a century for people to remember that there are consequences and shit. That's the thing, uh. I've started looking through like history and society through the lens of uh, war is inevitable. And as soon as you do that, everything starts to make a lot more sense yeah. uh, in a horrible way, but you know, Wait. it makes a lot more sense. I think yeah, we are not a good species, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. but you know, we're trying, we got some structures in place. I think some, I can't remember who said it, but the purpose of democracy is so that whoever has the political football of power, only ever has a tenuous grasp on it and doesn't have it for long. That's the like the whole purpose of democracy is to make this a frustrating shit show of nobody ever really changing anything. Hmm. Because the alternative is streets flooded with blood. I am looking at a list of things because because it's a summertime topic and we keep di- dipping into the politics. So give me a quick well, second here. We had but- a a political rally in the middle of the summer. This is not my that fault. That is true. I didn't choose. But I was looking at this one website called Best Life, and it's like, it says the worst things about summer, right? And it made me think, like, I remember when I, these, these certain things I started looking at, like, when I was young and when now that I'm older, they're vastly different. Like, number one, lines at music festivals. When I was a young person, Ooh. I love music festivals. All day, summer, outdoor thing. Now that I'm old, it's just the sheer concept of, like, thousands of people standing oh. around and noise and sweat and the music and sweat and and overpriced drinks and food I tell and hot you, carts. Um, I used to love going to festivals when I was young. Same. Again. So, same. I went to pick my kids up from download, and at some point, musical festivals went from niche to literally everyone who was there. I, I got panic attacks just looking at the crowd. There's no fucking you know, it, way it, I'm going to it, Everything festivals. goes like that. Like, I remember, like, I, we all love Halloween. I remember that, like, you know, nobody gave a shit about Halloween. There was a couple of haunted houses. Now now it's like Halloween season rolls around. Everybody has to go to a fucking haunted house. Hmm. And it's just like, go the fuck away. <laughs> Get out of my holiday. Fans. <laughs> and speaking Number- of being stuck in the lines for festivals, one of my favorite festival memories was being stuck in the line. Because I figured out that I can get drunk really cheap on shit, fizzy white wine. So yes. I got a five gallon jug of water, <laughs> emptied it out, and filled it with wine. For that, probably do me for the weekend. I must have drank two thirds of that in the line. I had to be helped into the festival. I had to call the guys and say, "Look, I can't actually walk. Uh, could you please come in?" There? Which brings me to it goes straight to number three on this list. Hangovers are worse in the summer because you're already sweating things out, and mm. then you start drinking. And like when you're younger, you're fine. You you can balance. I still do like hangovers. Mm. You're not trying yeah. hard enough. That, that, this, no, that is that is that is my is. that is my superpower. Um, do you just have enough residual? Like, are you like part camel? Like, you just have enough water in your body that like I I, I don't know what it is. I've never never gotten them. Like, you know, I'll wake up in the morning, I'll be a little dry and stuff, but I do not have. I've never had that like that pounding. Quick, fifty uh, brothers, go breathe on them. So like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm at the exact opposite. I have operatic epic hangovers. I'm just. I get real on wheel. Did you say operatic hangovers? Like I, I, I'm imagining this operatic hangover. Like, <laughs> just, I tell you, in the summer ah! it is worse. When the, you wake up and you're dried out and the sun is blasting through, no matter how many curtains you put on it, I feel like the guy from Apocalypse Now. I feel like it's like every time you see like those movies where like the vampire sees the sun and you hear that <laughs> like just a sheer volume like that is what the hangovers feel like to me. Number two on this list I found funny I'm, the pressure. I'm, I'm, to, oh, sorry, sorry, Rick. Go ahead. No, I was going to say if uh, you ever been to an A and D con and you notice that I'm and you've noticed that I'm extra loud in the mornings, that's why because I have no <laughs> fucking sympathy. <laughs> If you ever go to an AD con and notice that I'm shaking and slowly can't really focus on what you're saying, it's just because I want to die. I want to die. I'm doing my best, but I just, it, if you need to shoot me in the head at any point, please do it that moment. That'll be a, a relief. 
<laughs> Number two on the list was pressure to do something. Because when you're young, it's like, it's sunny, it's nice, you need to go do something. But as I've gotten older, like, oh no, the ability to not do anything is like, my fa- it's like, it's right up there with canceling plans. Oh, that's like heroin. Like, you got plans to do something, then you just cancel them, then you got the evening free. Oh my God, I feel so great. See, I'm torn on that one because summer, ideally, I want to do nothing, but I want to do it lying in a field or sitting in a beer garden. And I don't know what it is about this summer, but my day job's been extra hard. I just I don't seem to have any time. And I can feel it's England. The summer is a brief and wonderful thing. And I can feel the clock ticking every time I'm sitting in my stupid office job, looking at this perfect countryside outside, which I know will be full of rain and shit come Saturday. I just, I don't know. I, I feel like the time is being sucked out of me, like my soul, like some kind of Mortal Kombat villain is just owning me. Oh man, that's like I, I, I got a. That's such a depressing picture you've painted. That it's like it's like a, it's like a I'm Dilbert a cartoon, shit summer, but like, and it's like that's like it's. I'm trapped in God. a fucking Dilbert cartoon. <laughs> but every time you look off the page, it's just perfect green, like fucking beginning of Lord of the Rings. No, not the beginning because that was awful. When the Hobbit comes in and everything's right. nice, it's and the Shire. And green. It's yeah. the fucking Shire outside, you know. Yeah, but at this stage, I would take the beginning of Lord of the Rings not to be. <laughs> Stuck At least that was a little bit of action there. Room, yeah. <laughs> Some snarky elves standing there, like I was there three thousand years ago. Yeah, yeah we get it. You name dropping douche, we get it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Which, which, which of us wouldn't be happy if, like, you know, some, like, you know, some, some really tall wizard kicked in the door and said, "Oh, you're coming with me on an adventure." I've been waiting for I'm this. I'm there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let me finish this. Even Excel if you lead me out to a windowless white van, it's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Gandalf would just be sitting there looking at me filling cells and formulas and be, you know what? You stay here. <laughs> oh, he walks in and he's like, but not you. Steve, <laughs> not you. Steve Wise. No, you, It's you, ironic because I work with like 12 dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> just come in. They all go on an adventure. It's like, Steve, can you can you cover our reports? Yeah, sure. I'll see yeah. you in the autumn, you yeah, we're, fucking we're, we're, we're going to Mount Doom. You just sit here because you're depressing. <laughs> It's like, I'll go to Mount Doom. If you can throw me in the fucking volcano, that'd be sweet. Oh, the best part was we're going to take the eagles and we're going to shit on all the traffic because like, the giant <laughs> eagles are just crapping on everything in, in Middle Earth is the best part. So, yeah, you know, it's... Uh, just throw me in Mount Doom. At least I'll be warm. Which Another one on the list is just sanding your clothes. Yeah, sand is just the worst. I mean, I'm an Anakin Skywalker on this one. I hate it. I hate it so much. Uh, it is an irritant. Never, but- never have to deal with it. You know why? Because I grew up at the Jersey Shore. I lived there for 17 years, and I never go back because I hate the fucking shore. I hate the fucking people at the shore. Every time my wife says, "Do you want to go to the beach?" I'm like, "Do you want to stay married?" Like there, that is that's what it boils down to. Like there's nothing. Now I've been to like beaches, like like in um, Belize, wonderful beaches because it's it's still the waters are blue and it's nice and it is wonderful and it's 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 great. But anything on the east coast, the waters are green and the people smell and the and the ocean smells and everything smells and it's like fish and lotion at the same time. I mean, and the free heroin oh, needles are nice. Yeah, that is true. That is true. <laughs> I do fondly recall going to – there's a place I used to go to called Hunstanton, which had an old town and a new town. And the old town was like there's a fancy hotel there. It had natural dunes and cliffs. And the new town was where all the arcades and stuff was. So that's where we wanted to go when we were kids. But the beaches there is kind of like – just like one giant ashtray because this was the <laughs> 80s in England. I don't go to the beach often enough to be sandy about it, I guess. Um yeah, I accept that sand is deeply annoying, but see, there are several beaches on the West Coast when I was stationed out there, like I'm, like Northern California, where like it's more like some of those beaches are more like just pebbles than it is sand. You know, it's mm-hmm. like it is it, like, like more. Oh, I hate a pebble beach. I feel cheated by a pebble beach. I do <laughs> like a bit of sand. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm 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 I'm, I'm anti sand. You know, I don't need to make mm. a pearl in my butthole. So Pe- pebbles are just extra large sand, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know. I can't crush them beneath my feet i like to feel like a big man rick <laughs> well you said you worked with 12 little people so like you just, you just... <laughs> that's why i work there gibby <laughs> every beach for us is pebbles <laughs> do you just like come in like gargamel <laughs> like just start taking their things like <laughs> yeah well there's a reason i haven't moved on from the place in 10 years gibby and it's and it's not the salary <laughs> 
Because now, like, I'm like, now I've got flashbacks to like that uh, Warwick Davis show, Life is Short, where it's like all the the English little people running around, like, and like, I that was adorable. Like, and now I want to see, I, when I no, I want to see team meetings and team building exercises. I want to see this. Have you ever heard the uh, the stories from the? What was it the cast of? I think it was the Wizard of Us. But you get enough little people together, and uh, it's not pretty, man. Yeah, some of the drunk parties I heard about the Wizard of Oz got weird. So Steve doesn't realize that, but he's like, you know, he's he's essentially like he works with the Time Bandits. Oh my god, <laughs> that would be even better and worse at the same time. Like every time he leaves for the day, he clocks out. They go on another adventure. They go steal yeah, another kid, and they just go battle a new evil, and they're meeting Sean Connery. Kids. I know. He, he, he gets up to like grab lunch. It's like you know, opens up the like microwave. Like, don't touch that. It's pure it's evil. evil. <laughs> God damn it! You say that about everything I tried to get out of the microwave. <laughs> it's a hot pocket, you motherfucker. <laughs> Apparently, that's being remade, and I don't know if that's I don't know if it's a show oh. or a movie, but I heard the rumors that that's being ah, remade. God. Oh, you should leave some shit alone. Yeah, that's, I'm, 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 I'm it's sure Terry Gilliam, be. man. Is yeah. His stuff, Terry Gilliam's very unique, very niche taste. I think that might have been the most accessible thing he did besides oh. 12 Monkeys. There's no point remaking that stuff. If you can't capture the vibe, leave it alone. Yeah. Right. Entertainment Weekly. So, yeah, it, it, it's going to be a 10-episode. looks like a 10-episode show as a family-friendly. There's an action film. They're going to break it up into, like, into a, a some some streaming shows, 10 action. Like, no, I'm no. – don't do this. Don't make it family-friendly. You know, like, don't lean into the the weird. That's the oh, – Yeah, if it's not Terry Gilliam, it's like remaking a Roald Dahl book. You can't find – they're trying to do it now. They're like – it's really funny. There's, there was a newspaper article about these guys, how excited they were to remake a – they're basically doing sequels to all the Roald Dahl stories. And then the next day, there was a, a newspaper article and two of these guys were saying like, oh, yeah, we made a comment about uh, a, a glass eye being disgusting. And we really want to apologize to everybody out there who has a glass eye. It's like, this is why you can't remake Roald Dahl. Yeah. This is, you know, you just got to leave it where it was. Now, it's some what of the it was. news on this I'm reading, apparently, like, apparently Gilliam will be serving as executive direct, executive, oh, whatever. Executive yeah, producer. he'll be getting a paycheck for doing yeah, fuck yeah, all. Basically saying, Here, here's your money, please don't sue us. <laughs> and, and I don't and, I don't blame him for that at right. all. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, I'd sell out any of my books right now. And yeah. Taika Waititi apparently is set to co-write and uh, do the pilot. So. I don't and, think he's kind of had his day. Yeah, he comes and he goes because it's like I I like what he did when Ooh. they adapted what we do We're in the shadows. You, you went a bit dubstep there for a bit, man. Test test one two three. I think you're having a connection problem. Can you hear me at all? I can't hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you. You're fuzzing out as on you're the very video, eight bit right now. I am very sorry. I can try to reconnect. No, it's fine. Yeah, we can, don't get, like, I can hear 10 you. Okay. Minutes left or I'm going to leave all this in as well so people uh, understand the. Um, yeah. the but yes, what, what he did with what we do with what we do in the shadows, I enjoyed that, but they handed it off to other people. Like, and that was cool. They had, well, well the, yeah. the, 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 thing, the thing is, and I, and I, and I like him, but there, there's, there's a bit of that, I guess, M. Night Shyamalan like, you know, aspect yeah. of, you know, you come in strong with something big. And then your next thing is still good, but not as good. But then everything kind of gets progressively worse. <laughs> I like his trick, and he's done some great movies that don't entirely re- rely on that kind of irreverent, I'm not taking any of this seriously thing. He's done some movies before that, which uh, worked really well for him. Uh, the Wilder People or something is really good. For Quest, for the, Quest for the Wilder Quest People. For the, yep. Yeah, great film. But, it um, is good. I think he's just got a little bit too complacent with it. I, think- uh, I don't know. I, I, I say this because Wilder People and something like Jojo Rabbit are very endearing. They got a quirk. Yeah, I fucking love Jojo Rabbit. Right. Mm-hmm. Jojo, if you have not seen Jojo Rabbit, I highly, highly recommend Jojo it. Jojo Rabbit doesn't even work, I don't think, as a movie without Taiko Waititi's yeah. style. Right. I think but, but people are bringing him in. Hey, be the weird Taiko we know. It's like it's kind of like you're typecasting yeah. your director. Just be that weird guy. Yeah. He's like, okay, it's a paycheck. Fuck it. It's, this is what you asked for. So mm. I can do better. Yeah, and if, it kind of feels like Disney did that with Thor: Love and Thunder, you know, it kind of ignoring what made the the previous movie yeah. a lot of the aspects of what made pre- the previous movie good. They're just, hey, Taika, why don't you suck your own dick for ninety minutes? And <laughs> that's what we got. And so, Time Bandits could go either way. If it's just him taking a paycheck and sucking his own dick for ten episodes, it's going to suck. But if he's like, no, I'm going to the will the you know the will the people not. It's not really Terry Gilliam in style, but in terms of writing and the kind of, um, I guess, that kind of weird sort of stunted dialogue and emotional development they have, it kind of fits. It could it could work, but 
at the same time, why fucking bother? Leave it alone. Well, it is one of those things like that. It's a time capsule of weirdness at it. At, at, you know, you, mm. you had young Sean Connery as a, as a, as a Greek King. You had the, the minutes are you had, I was David Warner as uh, the evil guy. He was escaping me. Um, you know, it was brilliant all the way around. And I don't know if you can, you can't put lightning back in the bottle. So, yeah. and if they make it American, I'm going to shoot someone. Oh yeah. <laughs> He, they can fuck off with that sort of like you know this kind of there's a style to British comedy, yeah. And it's that kind of crapness I and the feel appreciation like you're of, me up for that for to argue again over ghosts. And yeah, I, I'll do that with you. It's you an know. appreciation of its own shitness, um, which like Red Dwarf is a fantastic example. It's like sure. What what if Star Trek was British and shit? And it's fucking mm-hmm. magical. It really works. But if they they try to remake Red Dwarf for America, it was doing really well, and they said it in America, and they recast the people with Americans, and it did not fucking work. It would have been a fine comedy because the writing's there, the America's there, the money's there. Obviously, with America it wouldn't even fine comedy. It just wouldn't have been what it was. Once in a blue moon, it, it does work. Because I remember I did enjoy the American version of Being Human about the same as the original version. I don't think I ever watched the American version of that. But again, that sort of struck me. It was like, okay, a, a werewolf, a vampire, and a ghost live together. That's and they walk into a, a bar. Yeah, that, yeah that's, that, a, that's yeah. a plot. That's any kind of urban fantasy plot. The important thing was like, oh, and they're British and a bit shit. It's yeah. kind of like, that's what lends itself to it. It's like, these people are kind of like, oh, I'm a vampire. But also, you know, I kind of don't really express my emotions properly or anything, you know? Well, it's it is a situation where like I've I um I got my wife to watch the American version of Ghosts and we enjoy it. It is sweet and it's more it, they lean away from the absurdity of the British style into more of like you know a sitcom formula with a, with mm. a little bit of touch of heart on it. And that's that, that is our cut. Well, that, that's show. what they do. Yeah. yeah, I'm not knocking that at all. I think it's great. The Office is a great example. They did that with right. the Office. I think the American Office is fantastic comedy. I don't think it was the groundbreaker the British version was and the British version worked because it had that kind of sardonic refusal to take its own heart right seriously you know this just the inbaked irony of everything my fucking country yeah, I does. I get it. This is we're after we're after Fourth of July. You got you want you want your proud moment of like a British comedy track and track and track. Oh but, no, I don't have to no, wait till after Fourth of July. Give me no, but now that it's after, you're like. <laughs> but what I would like you to do with the time we have left. Now I want you to tell me about your British version of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Because I know you like that show. Now oh, you got to make the English you version. You are totally just... you going to have to repeat that. Yeah. You went all robot on his yeah, whatever, ah. whatever epic I'm going to assume you said, you said uh, England is great and always comes out with the best. All right. Program. Am I coming back in now? <laughs> test, test. Am I? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Because you like this show, give me the English version of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh, we don't do that. We don't take American stuff and try to make English stuff out of it. And that's right. And you never will. You fucking losers. Uh, bottom, <laughs> bottom with Rick Mail and Aid Edmondson. Three seasons of the worst fucking people you can ever imagine living in a scummy apartment together, trying to get laid. Uh, the whole thing feels like it's uh, filmed through a layer of grease. And all they do is beat the shit out of each other in amusing ways. And that was a good 20 years before It's Always Sunny. It's not the same thing, but if you want grimy, awful people, but they're British, bottom. What a wonderful note to end on. My God, like just <laughs> Steve's bottom, <laughs> like Rick's, jer- Rick's Jersey heritage <laughs> and large, sweaty man I, breathing I will, on I will, you. I will just say, because longtime listeners Hot. will probably want, wonder why I didn't spend the last like 50 minutes bitching about my pool, and that's because the pool is officially dead. Oh, All right. the congratulations. Was, the, liner was, the liner was shot, so I cut it up. Uh, we, were, we were originally thinking about turning <laughs> yeah, it into who a Who shot it, Rick? <laughs> Just a just a casual drive by Italian ventilation. Yeah, you know, one, one, one of those one of those one of those one of those Russian wet rifles with no with no boring on it. <laughs> but yeah, it's like well, originally we were gonna we were gonna turn it into like a giant plant or kind of like a kind of like a greenhouse. But uh, then when I was in cutting up the liner, I got stung by a wasp, and at that point, I, now I'm kind of like, okay, cool day. I think I'm just gonna take this fucking thing apart. Yeah, yeah, that seems like a good omen to me. To destroy your your greatest enemy. What is Rick now without his greatest enemy? This He-Man without his Skeletor? 
Uh, we will, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, did you at least take photos of it? Like standing there, like a proud, like a, like one of those buck hunters, like who shoot deer, like, like standing in front of the corpse of it, like, like so happy. You're like, yeah, that's you your know, Christmas I, I, card. I, I would have, if I didn't get stung <laughs> and, and, and I assumed that that was its revenge and now I'm not going near it. Near it. <laughs> so if the record sure. is still out there, you need to go out there and just stand on top of it. And like, just like, as far as I'm concerned, that is now a pet cemetery. It's spoiled ground. I go, I'd like, you know, <laughs> if this turns out to be the opposite of poltergeist and you are haunted by your pool. <laughs> just now the thing is but that's the worst part liner could come out and like wrap you up and i've seen horror movies do this right like the the death pool the pool that drowns rick i mean like, we could watch this movie yeah oh, yeah but well, here's, here's the thing you're like you know the, most of that works because oh oh you're, you're you're wrapped in the pool liner you're being dragged underwater it's just, <laughs> you're wrapped just, in the pool yeah, yeah, yeah okay there. okay now I'm, I'm wrapped in an old pool liner Idiot. that's like you know, that that's about as thin as uh <laughs> as copier paper now okay that's annoying. <laughs> it just turns you into a Zentai suit. You're like, actually, this is this is kind of hot. You know, okay. Uh, well, I guess with the death of Rick's pool, summer has concluded for another year. Uh-huh. Thank you for tuning into our summer side quest. I hope you're, uh, I hope you're getting outdoors more than I am. I hope you're not being breathed on by uh, a large hairy man and his forty nine brothers. And I hope your pool is dead. Until next time. Goodbye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Authors and Dragons is brought to you under a Creative Commons license, meaning you are free to share this material so long as credit is given to those who created it, which is us, the people you just heard play the game. Opening and closing themes performed by the Gore Core 4. <laughs>